Today's video reminds us that good decision making is more important than tool use. Hi everybody, welcome to today's lesson here at Active Self Protection. I'm your host, as always, John Correa. Today's video was actually sent to me by the person wearing the body-worn camera, a non-sworn, and it's out of Tempe, Arizona. Palm pepper spray has recently reformulated for even more effect when you bless the deserving with the hot sauce. Palm is what I use between a harsh word and a gun and encourage everyone to do likewise. This video is from last year when all of the mask mandates and lockdowns went into play. We have a clerk here who is working at a 7-Eleven in Arizona and you're gonna see a guy come in here and argue with him about the mask mandate. So we have audio, let's listen in and hear what happens. Hello sir, do you happen to have a mask? No, I'm ADA compliant though. Do what? ADA compliant. Uh, I won't be able to serve you tonight if you don't have a mask on. I'm ADA compliant. I can't wear a mask per the to federal law. Okay. You can step out the door, sir. Actually, no. I need two cares. Okay. You will be trespassed at this point if you don't leave. I need you to exit the store. If you fail to exit the store, you are trespassed. Please leave. You're, I need you to leave. Is that real mace? That is very much real mace. I need you to leave the store. I've been maced before. I need you to go out Are now. Are you threatening me now? Leave the store. Get out of the store. I need you out. Out. <laughs> out of the store. Sorry about that. I am, I'm going to call the cops right now. Leave. Madam, you need to leave. I am you are, you are the cops. going to be all trash. You are, you are trash! You I, don't I, ever I, assault I, anybody, you child! Shut up! You are, Shut up! You're you get cannot sick wear a mask! You can't do yeah. it! I need a cop here right now at the 7-Eleven. Uh -oh. You little bastard you are, here! You have been you, you, you are trespassed! Leave. You are you bitch, I'm on the phone with the cops. I know you're on the phone with the cops. You so they can hear me asking you to please leave. You your hands on him and shut him the door. There's no trespassing, no word. And I have shopkeeper rules. You can stop cussing. I literally assaulted him because he cannot wear a mask. Okay? Yeah. Have a good day. Stop cussing and leave the premises. We are at the corner of Doncato's. Get the f away from me, you little bastard! I'm on the cop. The, the address is right there, but I'm he asking you to leave the premises. He needs to get away I'm from me. I'm asking you to leave the premises, madam. Go inside. You are going to be trespassed by the law enforcement as well. You are going to be arrested well. because you just assaulted that, him. No. Get the f he away was from told me. to leave the premises. Back he refused to leave. I gave him a lawful order to leave. I told him to leave and he refused to leave. Have a good day. He's gonna go back inside here and police did show up. Now we're actually gonna have the guy who's wearing the body cam out on the ASP podcast. And what you're gonna hear from him is he was initially charged with assault for this particular incident. Um, after a significant amount of time, the prosecutor decided to drop the charges. We're gonna talk about why and learn a significant number of lessons out of this one. That's where it ends. So much to talk about here. I strongly recommend if you have not taken a class on the moral and legal use of force, please consider we have a six part series that we did on that. Hit the link in the description. It's available on our website for just a few bucks. I would love for you to get that information so that you don't make some of these mistakes. 
Let's talk about them. Okay, friends, first thing that I really wanna talk about here is using your verbal judo, is obviously, man, we're in a tough time, and you know this whole thing with masks and mandates and restrictions and all that stuff has everybody on edge. So I can't tell you enough, use your verbal judo, use your negotiating skills, right? So, so again, talking to this guy and saying, hey man, I'm sorry, I can't serve you, whatever, so if you won't, then I gotta ask you to leave, and then just stand there and, and I'm not gonna serve you, I'm not gonna sell anything to you, I'm not gonna take your money. So going around behind the counter here, I think was a real big mistake. And I know that Al even admits that that was a pretty significant mistake. And the reason that it's a mistake is you have removed something between yourself that acts as a protector. You remove the barrier between you. So maintain those barriers if at all possible. So if you're getting into any kind of verbal confrontation, hey, do everything you can to de-escalate, escape, and evade. Because you stay out of every fight, and you win every fight that you stay out of. Number two, again, coming around here actually escalates the conflict. Now we're getting into a place where I have to act if the guy shows aggression to me, whereas if I'm behind the counter and he gets aggressive, then at least I have the counter. So again, stay behind the counter. Now, as they're arguing and all that stuff, we're gonna see here that he's you know, telling him, oh, okay, we're gonna have this bickering back and forth, whatever. He has the right as a property owner to, to control his property. You know, He is in charge of the property in the moment, has a right to control the property. Now that said, what happens here is dude gets his phone out and that's when our guy gets up and decides to OC spray him. And we're gonna talk about that in a minute. But one of the big things that you wanna talk about here is that is that Al told me personally that he was worried that, that what the guy was pulling was a weapon. So what he saw here was him pull his cell phone out and he figured in that moment that it was a weapon, which is why he went for his OC spray. Now I'm glad he went for his OC spray and not the baton that's in his hand, but recognize eyes, hands, and waist. That's what we're always looking at, but recognize now that, that he hoses him down with the hot sauce here. Now, I know a lot of people are gonna say, wait a minute, this guy wasn't a physical threat. Now, in Arizona in particular, under Arizona Revised Statutes 13-407, a person is justified in using physical force to remove somebody from their property if they've been informed that they are trespassing. This guy has been trespassing. He's been trespassed off the property by the person who's in control of the property so that a reasonable person, what a reasonable person would do, he can do in order to you know, physically remove him from the property. Now the question of course is, is that reasonable? Well, that's another question for another day and one that we have to talk about. However, using physical force like an OC spray is a thing that is okay for him to do in that moment. And we have to recognize that, that that's a kind of a unique statute in the state of Arizona which is why I think the prosecutor chose not to prosecute him in this instance, because it'd be very hard to convince a jury that beyond a reasonable doubt that it was unreasonable. Now, I also want you to notice that he does have a baton in his hand, and that baton is a very different thing indeed. Your OC spray is a physical force tool. It doesn't injure anyone. It's very unlikely to cause death or great bodily harm. However, the, the uh, uh, baton is highly likely to cause great bodily injury. It's highly likely to break bones. It's highly likely to put someone in the hospital. You talk someone upside the head with it, it very well could kill them. So that is a deadly force tool. I actually don't recommend batons for private citizens because it's no different than using a knife or a gun in the eyes of the law. I don't think that's worthwhile. Now let's talk about the OC spray can he has here. Is, is that, that looks like an ancient can. That looks like that can, you know, uh, was carried by Moses in boot camp. You can see how beat up it is and, and how much it's gone under. An OC spray has a shelf life, okay? And, and the, the valves and stuff will start leaking by after just two years. So you wanna replace it at least every other year. And again, I don't know, this, this spray did the job, did okay, but wasn't the most effective thing on earth. And so I strongly recommend it to everybody. Just replace your OC spray every year on your birthday. Just every year on your birthday, get a new can of OC. You guys know you've been around the channel for a while. You know that I love Palm OC. I think that it is an incredibly useful tool. I replace mine annually every year on my birthday just so that there's no doubt in the world about that. You definitely wanna spray as well. My guess is this is a really old spray. It's made by a company that's not very effective. And so I really only recommend Palm because Palm is, is incredibly effective, 1.33% major capsaicinoids and run by people that are good folks. So that's the reason that I recommend them. So, I, you know, I, I just wanna say, make sure that you are replacing your OC spray on the regular because you'll need it. Now then, he goes out to confront the, the wife here. And, and I think that's another huge mistake. Don't go out the front door. Listen, you got rid of the guy, whatever. Now you're just inviting more problems and you're giving him more chance to decontaminate himself and to get back in the fight and giving his lady a chance to get angry enough at you to get in the fight. Just go in the store, lock the door, wait for the cops to get there. 
Once you've won that first fight, don't get into a non-mandatory you know, mandatory second fight. And he did that here, and I would really not recommend that. Now, that said, I do want to say that, that if you recognize he's still out of the fight, that this guy for a good number of minutes is diminished significantly. And this is why I like OC Spray, because he didn't injure him. He just hurts for a long while and can diminish somebody that we need to end without having a significant physical interaction. So that's why that's a useful tool. But let's make sure we use it smartly. Let's make sure we de-escalate, escape, and evade at every chance we can. Replace our tools when we need to as we seek to cover our ass.